Hi, this is Arash and welcome to the Epoxy channel. In this channel, we're going to talk about the epoxy resins from the theoretical aspects to the most practical ones. So if this is the first video that you're watching or if you're interested in epoxy resins, please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Today, I'm going to present mechanical and physical properties of epoxy resins. Optical properties such as light transmission at various wavelengths are important considerations when choosing epoxies. Various grades of epoxy systems offer different light transmission properties. Both one and two part epoxies vary in color from transparent to opaque. You can see an opaque sheet uh, with a more transparent sheet in this image. Some applications require, uh, require a transparent product, for others, amber clear is acceptable as long as light transmission is good, sometimes opaque systems. Okay, let's introduce a few terms now. Absorption. When light passes through a medium, certain wa wavelengths are lost. This is called absorption. Emission. When a medium is excited, Light is given out by it. This is emission. Reflection. Light bounces back to the same medium beyond certain laws. This is reflection. Light is reflected. And uh, refraction. Light bends at the interface of two optical media due to the change in the speed of light. This is refraction. Okay, concerning epoxies, Optically uh, clear epoxies have excellent light transmission from 0 0.35 to 2.2 micrometer milliseconds are needed. Light transmission values from 200 nanometer up to 5 micrometers are of particular interest to many optical uh, engineers. Nearly all light transmission epoxies perform well from 350 nanometers to 2.5 micrometer. About 2.5 micrometer epoxies uh, vary greatly in their ability to transmit light. Another optical property is an index of refraction upon cure. Refractive index or index of ref refraction is a value calculated from the uh, ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to that of a second media of greater density. In our case here, the epoxy. This value normally ranges from 1.5 to 1.65. Finally, a surface luster or a brightness is gloss. A gloss meter, also gloss meter, is uh, an instrument which is used to measure the specular refraction or glass of a surface. Gloss is uh, determined by projecting a beam of light at a fixed density and angle onto the surface and measure the amount of reflected light at the equal but opposite angle. Uh, there are also some analytical tests available to measure the weatherability of the epoxy samples. Uh, based on the applications, uh, the epoxy resins or epoxy coatings might expose to light, water, temperature, and different temperatures, especially when they are supposed to be used for exterior uh, kind of applications. So in this type of test, we are about to simulate what happens uh, during months and years of performance. So uh, in order to measure the weatherability, we often use by accelerated weathering tester QUV, uh, which uh, simulate the conditions for, um, for the damage caused by sunlight and rain and uh, dew. 
so with, with water spray, can reproduce the damage the talkers over months or years outdoors in just uh, a matter of a few days or weeks. Materials are exposed to uh, alternating cycles of UV light and moisture at controlled uh, elevated temperatures, and after that, their mechanical and chemical properties will be analyzed. Considering other uh, properties of epoxies, we should mention chemical uh, resistance. Uh, as it has been said before, uh, uh, epoxy resins uh, show great chemical solvent and uh, water resistance. And, uh, but they are uh, susceptible to chlorinated hydrocarbons like uh, three chloroethylene, uh, methylene chloride and carbon tetrachloride. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, this uh, three chloroethylene is a non-flammable colorless liquid, which is sometimes uh, used to, uh, for example, wipe grease from the metal surfaces in, in industry, it is used frequently. Uh, they also uh, their moisture ab absor absorptivity is kind of uh, good, so it means that they are not absorbing moisture that much. So chemical resistance. Uh, we already said that the epoxy resins uh, chemical resistance is pretty good, but here we're going to talk about uh, the analytical method to. Uh, how to measure, for example, the chemical resistance. Chemical res resistance can be defined as the ability of a substance to endure itself from chemical attack for a specific period of time. Therefore, materials with high chemical resistance are uh, less likely to corrode. Chemical uh, resistance testing is carried out by immersing samples in various test fluids. The type of chemical reagents to be used are specified in application standards uh, to uh, reflect the intended service conditions. Uh, plastic and organic coatings are susceptible to increasing or uh, cracking following exposure to certain uh, reagents. The chemical resistance is usually measured by weight, volume, or dimensional change, a retention of tensile strain, elongation or impact strain, or visual uh, comparison with control after specific uh, immersion time and conditions. The resistance against uh, the chemicals is kind of provided based on these types of charts. And these charts, uh, in one column, we have the chemical of interest. Uh, the row shows the material that you're going to, for example, report these features for, and there are some letters which shows the which shows the performance of your material against that that type of uh, chemical. C stands for cold conditions, and H stands for hot conditions, 70 and 180 Fahrenheit, and uh, E stands for no attack to N readily attacked. So, uh, for example, when you're gonna see how uh, your epoxy works against alkaline, you can see that alkaline, epoxies, cold conditions, and E. E says that no attack. So your epoxy resin is kind of endure uh, against uh, alkaline in cold conditions. Uh, okay, so you can check it uh, for your reference, but here what we're gonna say is that the epoxy resins are kind of uh, strong or chemical resistance comparing to other uh, materials. Okay, the other important factor regarding the epoxies is their electrical properties. As it has been mentioned earlier, uh, epoxy resins show excellent electrical insulation properties and uh, they can be used for low voltage electrical insulation. Uh, the they, the electric strain is uh, between 300 and 600, and the dissipation factor is between 0 0.003 to uh, 0 0.006. We have mentioned that electrical properties of epoxy resins are kind of important, and uh, based on these electrical properties, we can use the epoxy resins for uh, insulation purposes in electrical and electronic domain. And the analytical tests for electrical properties are the electric constant, uh, electro electrical resistance, uh, dissipation factor, and electron conductivity or uh, dielectric strengths. Uh, in all these samples, we are about to, for example, apply f uh, electrical field or voltages, and we measure the performance of a sample. Uh, based on these data, you can, for example, see if your resin is kind of suitable to be used for electrical purpose or not.
The other important uh, feature of the uh, epoxy resins is their adhesiveness. And uh, in brief, uh, it should be mentioned that epoxies are kind of excellent adhesives. And adhesiveness is the property of sticking together uh, or the joining of surfaces of different compositions together. And uh, as I said, the epoxies are excellent adhesives and this is because uh, of their polar nature. Oxyron and glycidyl rings open to form polar OH groups and curing, uh, and also uh, they have the ability to uh, wet different types of surfaces. But uh, the high cost of epoxies limit their uses at adhesives, and instead, melamine formaldehyde and phenyl formaldehyde types of resins are often used for adhesives. So, in an analytical method for adhesion, uh, we should say that sometimes your material or epoxy resin is supposed to be used for adhesion, um, feature, uh, adhesion purposes and the aim of these kind of tests is to see uh, how uh, your material or, or how your epoxy resin works as an adhesive. The basic goal of adhesive testing is to produce a, a coating failure. The coating on the test may experience an interface failure between the substance and coating or between the individual coating. Suppose that we have a, a kind of a, for example, adhesive here. This is the substrate and this is your sample. Uh, we apply these types of tests uh, until some kind of failure happens. The failure could be one of these uh, followings. The failure in the substance, so it means that some part of substance will be kind of cracked and uh, just come with the sample. Sometimes uh, at the bonding, bond failure happens between the substrate and uh, the adhesive. Sometimes the adhesive kind of uh, failed when the load is applied and sometimes the substrate and adhesive are together and your sample is kind of is kind of uh, separated so based on these types of tests and these types of performances the adhesive the adhesion property of a sample is kind of characterized the other factor uh, that is important in the mechanical properties of a material is its dimensional durability or stability the dimensional stability refers to the uh, ability of a polymer to maintain their size even under varying environmental conditions. Sometimes uh, some kind of uh, plastics or resin is supposed to be used in, for example, for molding. And if shrinkage happens, it means that the dimension of the uh, uh, parts will be kind of affected, change, and it cannot be used. Sometimes uh, the molded material is supposed to have a very precise and certain shape. So dimensional durability and stability is kind of uh, necessary for those kind of applications. Epoxy resins uh, show excellent dimensional durability due to absence of a volatile content and cure. And the uh, mold shrinkage uh, could be this much. I mean, it's, it's very, very slow. And the elongation is would be between 2 to 10 percent. So technically, they are good in dimensional durability or stability. Thermal properties are uh, of important uh, properties of a material which should be uh, measured and considered uh, precisely. Uh, regarding the uh, material, sometimes a material is supposed to uh, exposed to a different heat temperature during the noon, for example, and during the night. Uh, the cycles might happen in the temperature. And so the heat deflection temperature or uh, a heat distortion temperature is often uh, introduced. The heat deflection temperature or heat distortion temperature is the temperature at which a polymer or a plastic sample deforms under uh, an unspecified load. Uh, and uh, regarding the uh, epoxy resins, uh, we should say that the coefficient, the coefficient of uh, lin linear thermal expansion of it is uh, 5 to 65 multiplied by 10 to power minus 6. And uh, briefly, uh, epoxy resins show excellent thermal resistance, uh, very good thermal insulation properties. And uh, thermal conductivity, uh, their thermal conductivity uh, is kind of poor and they can be used as uh, insulators. And uh, their heat deflection temperature is uh, 50 to 350 centigrade based on the type of the epoxy and the reinforcement tools. 
Several methods used for uh, thermal analysis of a sample or the analytical method for uh, analysis of a sample. Uh, these uh, methods include thermogravimetric analysis, differential scanning calorimetry, and the differential thermal analysis, thermomechanical analysis, and dynamic mechanical analysis. The concept behind these thermal analysis or these analytical method is that we are about to measure one property of a sample when the heat is applied. For example, in TGA, we're going to look at the stability of a sample when heat is applied. So it means that in zero centigrade, go for, for example, up to 800 degree and we see the weight loss of the sample. Or, for example, in DFC, we're going to see what kind of reaction happens when the heat is applied. And also, we can check the expansion versus time, volume versus time, and so on. So, thermal analysis talks about the properties of a, uh, a sample when heat is applied. We have also some other analytical tests for thermal properties. Uh, these tests are include softening range, heat deflection temperatures, thermal conductivity, flammability, and heat capacity. These uh, tests are kind of measure the thermal properties, like for example, in flammability, we're using a flame to see how uh, our sample reacts when uh, it is uh, kind of exposed to direct flame. Or for heat capacity, we are going to measure the heat capacity of the sample, thermal conductivity, and uh, for example, for deflection, we are about to check what is the temperature when the heat deflection is kind of happened to our system. Thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, please share your thoughts, questions, or comments, and I'll come back to you soon. Thank you.